Okay, boys and girls, here we are again. We talked a little bit about uh, this the other day. We're going to be talking about a comparison between the Cybertruck and its uh, three competitors. And what we're going to be talking about today is the body structure and the styling. And as you can see, as everyone knows, this is a quite, uh, quite a polarizing kind of design. It's like, a, for the old people, Mad Max, uh, for the new guys, Halo kind of a design. Actually, it looks just like the Halo uh, product uh, in the video game. This has got very aggressive lines, what we used to call masculine before uh, politically correct. It looks like it's going to either take off or, um, or, or Mad Max is going to hop out of it. The um, polarizing effect has uh, caused some writers to call this thing the ugliest pile of rubbish on the planet. And some folks, like myself, who take one look and say, oh, I love it. That, uh, that polarizing effect is, I think, exactly what Elon Musk was looking for. And uh, he succeeded. OK, so let's talk uh, a little bit about the body geometry. That's what really sets this apart from everything else. These are, like I said before, very hard or aggressive lines. The lines give it its, its, uh, its intrinsic value. It, it gives it its style. This is a really, really unique way of making a product. Um, these lines are here for another reason, and that's because this is a very difficult material to try and form. Stainless steel is not your best friend when it comes to uh, forming techniques. So let's have a look at these lines that you see on the Ford and the Chevy and the Ram. These lines are impossible, absolutely impossible, with anything that's, uh, anything that's hard like a stainless steel, especially if it's thick. Remember, too, these are very thin because all they do is basically direct the wind in a new direction and give you styling. This kind of stuff can't be done in a 300 series stainless steel. As a matter of fact, Elon Musk said, uh, he had a quote on a Twitter, he said the reason the Cybertruck is so planar is that you can't stamp um, ultra hard 300X steel because it breaks in a stamping uh, press. And uh, that's kind of true. So when you wanted to have the, uh, the product that, that he's got here, where we're looking at um, an exoskeleton unibody, um, what you need is you need to have simple lines and simple forms, otherwise you'll never, get, uh, you'll never get this thing to come together properly. Stainless steel has limitations, just like everything else, and um, the limitations basically are going to be uh, forcing you into a different kind of stamping operation. This is not going to be like that. This operation here is going to be very, very, very simple. Maybe even just using uh, press brakes as opposed to using great big giant stamping dies to crank out fenders or doors or what have you. One thing I'd like to point out, because people will tell you that this kind of styling that you've got here, this is for aerodynamics. Bear in mind that this is looking more like the front end of a uh, F, uh, F-22. So we, we, we are looking at aerodynamics being done in a different way if we, if we look at the, uh, the geometry that we've got here in this product. So most of the trucks that are classified as heavy duty or even light duty, I have a body on frame construction. The, the body on frame allows for um, independent movement between the uh, cab and the uh, actual box. The reason for that is because these trucks are made for work duty loads and they go off road and, and so consequently that twisting action in the old days anyways helped out. Um, since we've got modern suspension systems, it's not as important, but it is what it is. So this type of construction has, uh, as you can see here, quite a, number of, uh, quite a number of pieces. 
Let's go and have a look at a, at a unibody style truck. The only one really that, uh, that we can talk too much about is the Honda Ridgeline, which really from there forward is a Honda Pilot and, uh, and they cut that off and turned it into a pickup truck. Have a look at the number of bits and pieces that you see inside here. This is what gives you the strength of a unibody. Now, this body does not twist much. Um, there may be some twist, but not much. And so consequently, this is looked at as a very light duty type of, uh, type of pickup truck. So this is a unibody without a frame, but this is different because this is an exoskeleton. That is an endoskeleton, it's inside. So the skeleton acts just like your body in protecting you with the ridgeline, but now what we're looking at is more like a turtle. So that's got an exoskeleton. And that exoskeleton has got strength built into the outside walls. This, this product over here, what you're looking at with, uh, with the endoskeleton is something that's going to hang all the cute features and fix fixtures and features that you see on these trucks, all the styling and whatnot. That's, that's what's really sitting on the outside. It's just a skin. So when you get into this kind of a product, there will be very, very, very little twist, almost none. And uh, quite frankly, for this type of a product and the fact that it's got an air suspension system, that'll be just fine. There's virtually no reason why this wouldn't perform as well as or better than uh, the, uh, the three that we've got here. So all we can say about this is that everything here is dramatically opposite to that and dramatically different to the, uh, to the folks here who are using body on frame. So let's talk about the Cybertruck's material of choice. This is a 3-0-X. The X means that they're not telling you what that last ingredient is in the, in the uh, cold rolled stainless steel that they're gonna be using. Um, we can guess at it, but for right now, we're just gonna call it 3-0-X. This material was developed and borrowed from SpaceX. So my guess is that this is going to be something that's gonna be ultra hard. It's probably gonna res resist corrosion significantly and also make it so that uh, they can develop the product with simple stamping methods. So this isn't the first vehicle on the planet that went with stainless steel. Um, there's been others. One famously was the DeLorean which was a 1980s uh, uh, type of product. It had uh, initially started out similar to what the styling was here on the Cybertruck, but unfortunately they used the same kind of system as what you've seen here. So over the top of the endoskeleton, they had put stainless steel panels. They were very thin. Um, they had, in many cases, a plastic backing. It was a disaster and a miserable job to try and make happen. And the reason I know a little bit about that is because I actually worked on the DeLorean and uh, it was a miserable experience to say the least because I was on the end of the program. The program was already over, it was in production and they were trying to make things happen. The reason that DeLorean went with the stainless steel was the same reason that we see the, um, the stainless steel Cybertruck. And that was to try and figure out how to eliminate the 500 million plus that you're gonna to have to spend in order to get paint, okay? So the experience that, uh, that we've had basically with stainless steel is, if this is truly done similar to what they've got here, they will not need paint. And we already heard about what I had to say about paint, just skip it. I'm not really interested in doing paint and definitely not interested in chrome if I don't have to do it. So, this, this idea right here with the exoskeleton using the stainless steel and making it so that it's uh, basically a cost save, a cost save in that uh, I, my, my tooling and the simplification of manufacturing has been, has been helped out. And quite frankly, all this can be melted down so it's recyclable, so green if you like. Okay, so now we're gonna talk a little bit about tooling and as many of you know, um, that's where I started out. I was a tool maker. I used to work on dyes and molds and stuff like that before I got into engineering. But you don't have to be a tool maker or an engineer to have a look at this simplistic kind of design and think about, okay, what would I use to make these parts? Well, I'd be cutting this out maybe with a water jet. I'd be probably taking this, 
this hard line here and bending it in a simple break, um, I would probably be looking at very, very little time to develop the design because quite frankly, it's not going to be a big deal to design something like this for, uh, for, uh, for structure and for crash worthiness and uh, qualification and the on and on and on. Okay, so this is kind of like simple and less expensive. And that's the Monroe mantra. When we design products, we try and make it so that they can be as simple as possible. We try and eliminate as many parts as we possibly can. And we try and get rid of fixtures and functions that really don't add value to the customer. So when we're looking at something like this, this kind of follows almost every design rule that Monroe uses when it teaches how to design for lean. So anyway, so we look at this and we say, well, what about some of the features that may be a bit tough? Okay, so there are tricks and one of them is uh, laser etching. And you put a laser edge on the back and then you come down and bend it and it bends nicely all by itself. So the next thing you'd look at is, what about welding? How, how, do, I, uh, how do I put this thing together? Well, <clears throat> this is stainless steel, uh, probably 100%. And that means that you're going to be using TIG, uh, tungsten inert gas welding. And now, that's tough for operators to do, but, um, but welders, welding, welding, I should say, for, for this product is probably going to be done mostly by robots, and robots like uh, TIG. So now let's talk about uh, a little bit about the complexity that you'd see here versus the complexity you see with the Honda Ridgeline interior, the endoskeleton. Have a look at that, okay? This is uh, hundreds of dies that have to be made in order to make this all happen. This costs millions and millions. In fact, in some cases, we've seen them billions because they have three, three sets of molds, in, or dies rather, in order to make this stuff. So you're talking sh tremendous amounts of money. And then when you get all done with that, hey, what are we gonna hang on top of it? I've got fenders. And remember, we talked about class A surfaces before. These are not cheap. These, these dies are not cheap. And then they've gotta be painted. And then they've gotta be installed with nuts and bolts and whatnot. All that stuff disappears on the Cybertruck. Look at all these fancy little doodads that they're sticking on the front. Well, that stuff all disappears as well because that thing is making everything disappear. Also, with the exoskeleton, a lot of that stuff for sensitivity as far as, uh, as, far as damage and whatnot, that all kind of goes away. And what, uh, what we think is that as you move towards something like this, those little serviceability issues, you know, somebody uh, releases their grocery cart or whatever, and it hits the side of your car, well, with one of, the, uh, one of the conventional vehicles, you've got a paint chip. With this, you've got a badge of honor. I drive a Jeep. Anybody that doesn't have, uh, anybody that doesn't have scratches on a Jeep uh, basically isn't a real Jeepster. We, people who drive these kinds of vehicles, something that looks like this, like I said, uh, uh, Mad Max kind of a car, this kind of a thing is totally different mentality than what I have with my truck, which is my pride and joy kind of a thing. I think, uh, I think that this is probably one of the biggest things going for it, is the fact that if it does have a, a, a small crack or a small scratch or, a, or a, even a big one, all it's gonna do is make, the, is gonna make the, uh, the, the truck look better. Okay, we talked a little bit about the, 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 the rationale behind how uh, Tesla did what they did and why. And now what we're going to do is we're going to try a little comparison between what the Cybertruck is probably going to be doing against its competitors. And we're going to start off with the Ford F-150. This, uh, this truck is uh, pretty innovative. Um, it was the first truck to come out being aluminum. It's got uh, lots, and lots, of, uh, lots and lots of followers. They, they sell 800,000 of these vehicles a year. And uh, quite frankly, at the beginning, uh, they had their fair set of challenges. The, uh, the, car, the car had lots and lots of uh, little issues when they first got it out and, their, and their, uh, their competition jumped all over them. 
uh, but there are certain things that I, I see as, uh, as, a big, as, as a bit of an issue. Normally I like to see a white car, but this is a black car, and even on a black car, you can start looking at whiskers that come out here and go up there, and the same is true here, and here, and here, and there, and there. And rabbit ears are usually caused because of the radius that you're going to have when you put in the door handles or the door me mechanisms. These, uh, these things are something that uh, you try to get uh, rid of. You don't want to have that. This car has been around for a long time. Of all of them, this is the oldest design, so you would expect that that sort of thing would be disappearing. The body and the doors and the other major components like the, uh, the lift gate, all of those parts are, um, are made out of aluminum. Aluminum, like stainless steel, is resistant to corrosion, uh, but obviously Ford still continue to paint the vehicles. Where aluminum doesn't really compare favorably to stainless steel in its durability and impact resistance, aluminum is uh, simply much softer material. And as a softer material, it gives you different challenges when you start to manufacture. So the tooling and manufacturing expertise is a little different. A major consideration in making the move to aluminum was the need to develop uh, new expertise and tooling know-how. Um, aluminum, as you may not know, um, actually eats up, dies like there's no tomorrow because aluminum oxide with a little bit of dirt will give you the same material that a grinding wheel is made out of. Um, although it sounds simple, it is throw in a new material and start stamping it using conventional methods, there's much more to it than meets the eye. People have basically have spent their entire careers, their entire life, perfecting the nuances of, uh, of, of stamping steel. And manufacturing plants are definitely wary about switching to new materials. Aluminum, uh, given its softer properties, is more easy to deform, but if you push it too far, you can get wrinkling and tearing, um, and basically you can compromise the material uh, properties. Aluminum also gives you what we call the rational spring back, so sometimes what winds up happening is you get a, um, a little surprise um, when, you're, when you're trying to form this stuff in that um, initially it's in the right shape and then as it moves down the line, it changes its shape and uh, the guys on the factory floor have, uh, have some problems. Ford's now had a time, enough time to, uh, to really dial in their manufacturing processes and they've proven that aluminum can be, um, can be done well as far as trade-offs, the aluminum is certainly more expensive than steel, but it allows the body uh, to uh, drop significant amounts of weight, which helps fuel efficiency. Ultimately, that saves the OEM's money in the form of, um, of reducing emission penalties. The Cybertruck, uh, by contrast, will be the, using the heaviest material of all with that 30X, ultra-hard stainless steel. That's almost three times as dense as aluminum and um, it's also quite a bit more expensive. Okay, let's look at the Chevy Silverado. GM has been around for a century, cranking out heavy duty, light duty trucks, similar to what we've got here. Their material of choice has always been steel, but lately they've changed their mind a little bit. This is a relatively new design, and uh, what they've done is they've done all the closures basically in aluminum. So the hood is made out of aluminum, the doors, both the doors, are made out of aluminum. And then we get back here, and we find that uh, the tailgate is also made out of aluminum. Now, the body, or the, the base of the box, is made out of steel. However, it, um, it's not always the same. So what we've got is the Chevy, but it has a sister called the, um, called the GMC. And the GMC decided that they were going to try something a little bit different. So they've got a, about an $800 option here to get the, um, what they call the carbon pro box. And the carbon fiber is here, 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 and here. The other materials that they've put in place are glass fiber, which is the green, Plastic trims, which are basically blue. Steel, again, the outside, uh, the outside fenders are steel. Aluminum is in black. So 
they've done a good job at uh, trying, to, trying to push the market a little bit into carbon fiber, which is a good idea. I've always felt that carbon fiber for a box would be the right thing to do. As a matter of fact, if I was going to make a suggestion, I would suggest that Ford skip the uh, aluminum and go to a carbon fiber box because it's a lot more rugged. So this sounds like it's all revolutionary, but it's not the first time for GM. GM made another product that, uh, that uh, basically was in a Chevrolet, and um, it, was, um, it, was made out of, um, it was made out of a composite, uh, a plastic. It didn't work or it didn't gain the traction because there's a draft angle. It came out in one piece, and there's a draft angle that, uh, that has to happen, and that means that you start off with four feet at the top, but by the time you get to the bottom, um, it, wasn't, uh, it wasn't good for uh, the guys who were doing construction and things like that. So <clears throat> this is GM's hanging their hat on something like this. I think this is a good idea. Here we are uh, with the Ram. The Ram uh, actually is, uh, is my favorite. It's probably my favorite for a lot of reasons, but for the most part, I like the features and functions that this has got that the others don't have. Ram decided that they were going to put their money on those features and they skipped some things that were a little different or, or maybe thought provoking for other places. So what they've done is they've, they've given us um, an aluminum hood. The tailgate is also aluminum, but the doors, the doors are still steel. So um, the reason for that is because uh, they wanted to put their money where people were going to see the, the, the features and functions. This is one uh, truck of the year, a couple of years in a row. And, and that's because it, it really, inside, is a lot more feature functional. So this product is uh, conventional, similar to what we would see over on the Silverado. Um, it's made out of steel. And, um, and, but they've done some different things, and we'll talk about those later on the inside. So let's, uh, let's summarize a little bit about the difference between the Cybertruck, which we look at as its own separate island, it's different than everybody else. Um, the Cybertruck is into territory that other people really uh, have, uh, have no desire to get into. And as I mentioned, I really don't think it's a true competitor to these, uh, the other big dogs here, but they're going to have a few probabilities of having problems. Um, one is... I don't know where they're going to get all the stainless steel they need in order to hit the kind of targets that they want for sales. It's going to be, it's going to be a challenge for them, but it also creates a brand new type of world. Um, no one's done this type of a design ever uh, that I know of, except for military type of vehicles. And, uh, and quite frankly, um, you've got to applaud them just for the, the fact that they're going to be doing something that's inventive and new and different. Um, they're, their problems that they, they're going to have are probably maintaining some of the uh, tolerances and dimensional stack ups that you're going to have. Trying to avoid uh, spring back, which is something that you do see when you're fooling around with, uh, with stainless steel. But if they pull it off, there's a lot of advantages. And again, the biggest one, no paint shop. When you're trying to start up a, 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 a car or a vehicle of any kind, you have to look at whether or not you're ever going to get your money back. Your investment costs are the things that you have to think about. And with this product here, it's going to start off with simple tooling. Um, and then on top of it, it doesn't have to have a half a billion dollar paint job. I think that avoiding paint is a, is a great idea. Because really, now I don't have to sequence, sequence colors. I, I mean, there's a thing called an oddball line. And uh, that, that oddball line will never be needed in this kind of a product. The body shop is going to be considerably smaller. And we're going to be looking at, uh, at easy matches. <clears throat> easy matches for, um, well, side mirrors, which it doesn't have, door handles and things like that. All these, all these different functions and features that uh, kill you on the assembly line are, are missing on this product. So... We've got, uh, we've got uh, uh, quite a bit of competition that we're going to see here. With that, I'd like to uh, basically close off. I'd like to say that, uh, that uh, we are selling uh, the reports for information. You can email sales at leandesign.com. 
and uh, that uh, that'll that'll get you into seeing our guys, and then they can help you out with motor analysis, inverter converter analysis, the octo valve, and heat pump. So uh, all those all those different uh, kinds of reports are available for you um, either now or in a week or two. So anyway, thanks so much for watching. We're going to be coming back with videos. They won't be as frequent as before, but we're going to make sure that uh, that you kind of got a good grip on what's the difference between the Cybertruck and its uh, three competitors. Make sure you tip those uh, those uh, uh, cashiers. We are still in uh, still in the throes of this this virus. Thanks a lot. Have a great day. We'll see ya.